I'm at a gypsy. How, what do you think? What do you make of the combine? Last topic before we go. Danger boy. Uh, I'm, I've been on that train, dude. Yeah. Well, hey, you can say it. You were right about Danger Boy. <laughs> if, if, I, if I could say I was right about Lawrence, you were right about Danger Boy. I've been Danger on boy. the train. I'm a Brian Deegan fan. I love like his hustle. People that hate on them are ones that are not willing to hustle. They don't have the work ethic. Like the amount, I don't know how they can sustain. I, I don't know how Brian can look as good and lean as he is and take care of his body as well he does. Um, the amount of travel, the amount of stress. Like, just because you have more money, you have more opportunity, doesn't make things easier because mm-hmm. of the level of expectation. So I think what the Deegans are doing and what Hayden is doing is is something special that we're a bit on that journey. My sons that are 9 and 11 are going to watch his journey three days a week on YouTube or whatever their thing is. And, and I'm able to, now that I'm a world away, follow it also and feel part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whether it's real or fake. Yeah, fit. you're seeing it from a different angle now. And I'm like, this is so cool that I can still follow the journey and see him hit these tracks. And like, it, he's bringing, different than Jet, I think, is he's bringing an audience to our sport. Like, he's bringing an audience to our sport where usually our sport built audiences. Yep, yep, yep. Like, I, I would say to say that we are helping, the industry has built Jet's audience. Yeah. Like, yeah. but... They've built their own. They've built their own. Now they're injecting it into yeah. the sport globally. Yeah. Um, which is something that's Yeah, you talk about like that pie. <laughs> like when they go from amateurs to pro, the pie just got got bigger. Like if he's not in if he's not in opening ceremonies, it could be dis, it could be a disservice for the like Could you of, imagine? No, but could, but seriously, yeah, right? No, that's a great point. Like if Hayden Deegan isn't allowed in opening ceremonies, there could be people coming from the You're YouTube like, why world, am I here? Why am I here if this kid's <laughs> yeah. like, like, and I, are they going to change the number rule? Like, I'm just like, there's certain things to allow the sport to grow that they actually mm. have to think about. Yeah. Like Hayden Deegan, um, the volume he's putting in is just the same as any other top. He's not faking it. Nah, dude. Like, they're prepping. He's taking the Alessi method, racing the tracks. Everyone used to make fun of the Alessis for racing all the tracks to prepare. That, Tony, hey, that worked. Tony had that right. Yeah. Right? Brian sees that. Then he's like, all right, this. What he does right, he's not all in with one trainer. He's not all in with one program. He's like, Swanee, you do this great, but we're not just going to be with you. Hey, Rhino, coach him here a little bit. Yeah. Hey, come in here. Like, that's that balance of and being comfortable yeah. with feedback. It's just humility, bro. Yeah, it's like they like Brian. I don't, I don't talk to like Hayden, so it's not like my yeah, relationship. Yeah. Like I'm not, we're not. Yeah, talking, yeah, because he's know? a kid. Yeah, he's a young guy. <laughs> but I talk to Brian, and the level of humility that he's got is, I think, again, it, that comes back to like Dazza. You know, like Dazza just has this crazy level of humility, which he kind of should, because he's fucking Darren Lawrence. Before his kid won a motocross championship, he was just a mo. You know what I mean? Like he wa- wasn't this proven. He wasn't anybody. Whereas like Brian Deegan is Brian Deegan. He never had to do anything else in his life. He didn't have to achieve one more thing. We could have never known who his kids are and he's still Brian Deegan. Absolutely. So to have the level of humility that he's got around his kid's career and, you know, even things that he's asked me, like, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And I'm like, dude, I'll just... He yeah, generally yeah, wants I'll to know. I'll give you my advice. Like, don't, I'm sitting here going, don't think I'm right about this, but this is what I personally believe. Because he knows that he's so sucked into his world. Like, like he's so... Yeah. He's so... In his world, all he sees is blinders. Yeah, you can't be across everything. He, so he reaches out to people in different spaces to make sure, gets some feedback, dissects and, and it. And whether he thinks I'm right or wrong. But he's like, getting some feedback. It's a little bit of something. And that takes humility for yep. you to go to someone and say... So what do you think about this? Yeah. What do you and, think? and, and I, it being an off the wall kind of deal and you know. I think the the combine showed there's it would have been cool to see D Francesco and, and and Hayden like race each other because that's been we've been wanting that to happen for a while. There's an age gap that's been separating. We're gonna see Is, it. So Hayden's younger? Younger. Yeah, okay. Um That's scary. Yeah, and I think uh Ryder D I two years ago I'd have been like, ah, uh, maybe maybe uh like overhyped because he was that blonde haired kid you, you know yeah, you like watched his cali journey kid, yeah. that cali kid but he was in all the videos yep, and he was yep yeah. and his parents did a good job marketing him but yeah. um 
the Deegans came in over the top of them, better marketing, more exposure, kind of took the limelight away from him. And I think the kids actually used it to fuel him. Mm. You know, like he's a good kid, super respectful. He's a real nice kid. Yeah. Actually, had we did a podcast after his last 85 race or super mini race, but it was the first time when I, it was like, I think the first podcast I did the thing, I fucked the audio up. So we never put it out. Uh, but I spoke to him for like an hour and a half. He's, he's a fucking super nice he's kid. He's a great, well mannered, good, sp- well spoken kid. And he's, he's legit. But going back to Deegan, wrap up on him, like, I just can't wait to follow the journey, like with yeah. every, all the other YouTube subscribers. Like, I think the, ju- I think the jury's out now on like if he's good. He's fucking so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, like when you have Sexton and Christian Craig and all these other guys in- endorsing his skill on a bike and, and his work ethic, the only thing you said is that being that good human and how hard it would be as a dad, like just taking from a dad and a mom, like the things that kids seeing and being exposed, exposed to, to, yeah, like at a young age, how can that not like? How do you coach that? Like him signing boobs at sixteen, yeah. like that's not normal. Like, like, yeah. And I'm, I, I, and that's what that's success, the project. That's, I, I that, completely. I, agree. I don't. That's I, I. If anyone could handle, it's Brian and Marisa. Yeah. Let's be honest. They've seen more of all that than any other moto parent there is. Hundred percent. So if there's anyone that can handle it, it's them. Yeah. And and I I'm I, I, I as a parent I would love to pick their brain after they succeed. Yeah. yeah. Like cause yeah. success, what is their success? I think Brian's success is to see his kids succeed. It's not an actual physical champion or a race win. It's like whatever their limit and, and yeah, goal you is, wanted to reach their potential, their potential. I really feel that Brian doesn't have a potential, like a, where Tony had, I want to change the Tony. Let's say that I want to change the record books. I'm going to change yeah, it. like ego, ego, he had, he, his ego at that time. So, he, so he, this is like the, the that in a nutshell is like there's some form of tony alessi's and again this is i fucking i'm not trying to be this is just objectively spare i'm this objective about myself so i'm this nasty to myself (laughs) when i think about my own ego but there's there's a percentage of his self-worth that was tied up in his kids being the best ever winning these like that's where there's poison in the water in a sense you know and i think that with with uh and i mean you can see it with guys and like you hear it a lot with guys dads where like it's a very old story of where the dad it's a it's as much about the dad having the famous kid and the fast kid as it is about the kid doing his thing you know and i think that that's where Dazzy again is a really great example, but he he isn't Brian Deegan. Like he didn't come; he's just a dude from the Gold Coast, uh, from the Sunny Coast, you know. Um, but yeah, so I think that with there's a percentage of the the self worth on Tony's end that is guiding decisions. You can't; it's there's no objective. Well, maybe if someone knew, no, if nobody knew my name ever, like as Tony Alessi, that would be the best thing for my kid. Then he didn't do that. He did the thing where everyone knew who he was and, you know, so as you've got to be really objective and you've got to be really careful at like, okay, am I doing this for myself? What part of this is for him and what part of this is for me? And I think that when, when you got Brian, I think the, their kind of ace up their sleeve is the fact that, like you said, he's been there and he's done it all. So you just, you're not really going to have that same sense of validation because I think, I personally think, And it's one of the things I find the most interesting in people in general is when you can be famous or really well known and it, your self-worth isn't tied into it. Like there, that's the the rarest kind of, like, I just think that's peak level because you've been exposed to something that so many people have never been exposed to, right? So like you, you've never been exposed to what Brian Deegan has been exposed to. You've never had the pussy thrown at you that he has. You've never had the parties. You've never, there's so many experiences in your life that you've never had. Right. And those kinds of experiences changed your 
it's like you're in like this feedback loop with the world so you get this given this feedback and then that feedback then dictates the decisions that you then make and then you get more feedback on it so you can get stuck in like this kind of like ego loop you know and i'm sure there was a point in brian's life where that's like how it was he was the fucking man he was brian deegan he was playing a character but then he was sort of also like had trouble separating the cat you know like that's what you see with like conor mcgregor and you see with these guys that turn into these they have like these crazy personalities around yeah, you yeah. Know? Mm-hmm. so when you see a guy that goes through that and then they come out on the other side and they're just like super fucking humble super you know down to earth that to me i'm like you've just passed the ultimate test in life and that's why i think that that brian's got that is going to be like a little bit of a secret weapon yeah you know? i i, I it's a, you'll you'll agree with this i think a parent if you see a parent or a girlfriend uh there's a, a rule on the, i think the girlfriend is a bit much but a parent or an agent or a girlfriend, the first one to the podium, make sure they're in the camera. Yeah, yeah. There's an ego. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, for sure. Tony was always there in the podium, always there in the... He was always in the camera. Yeah. I've never seen Dazzy really on TV. No. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. John, oh, John, John, uh, yeah, yeah. John Tomac, do you see him? No. Like, you, but you, I could... There's other parents that yeah. find their way into that camera. Yeah. After the race. The girlfriends especially, bro. Yeah. So many times where it's like, really, do we need you there? But like, like you see the ones... Do we need your track walk? I'm, you need a, to be the, walking the track. There's an anomaly. What do you got? What do you got? What <laughs> are you going to tell him? <laughs> there's an anomaly though. And that's why I said there's... Uh, is, and I love her to pieces because she's amazing. He was Mathilde M- M- Muscan. Yeah. She's yeah. always there. That's a legit partnership. <laughs> that's a legit yeah. partnership. So like, yeah. I just want to say there's, there's anomalies. Yeah, there Mathilde is. is one of them. Um, Fernand, uh, Fernandez's his wife because they've traveled. They've been in it. Yeah. Right. But like... I look at Dazzy like we t- we've talked about him. I've met him a handful of times and um, have the utmost respect for just his journey. But I've never seen him after a race. Yeah, I've never seen him popping bottles. I've never seen him trying to get his fix, his limelight to show his friends on the sunny coast that he's made it. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, like there's yeah, that's a, that's something that if you start seeing the parent try to get in there, like as a parent, lose like you win and win like you lose. Mm. Your son or your daughter, if they get third and they ride their best race they've ever had and you're not stoked, if you can't recognize their best effort, mm. then they are going to hit the gutter. Yeah. If you only get pumped when they win, you're it's it's bad. Yeah, it's a long road. It's a long road. You got to celebrate those dead last, that Indo and the whoops, gets back up, leaves it all on the track and gets eighth. Yeah, you gotta gets s- ninth, but his last laps is fastest. Because they're not comfortable. Those parents, like not the Deegans, right? They want those free boxes to show up. They get that ego from ordering 25 pairs of goggles. They get those... Bro, you have no idea how real that is. <laughs> I literally last week dealt with some shit Yeah, like it's, it's like the parent... Like for me, my son, he's going to get what he gets, whether he's dead last in the C grade class or if he's the second place guy in Australia. His dad still has the connections and the yeah, relationships. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's not going to better his life. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, like, totally. Like... Like he's going to wear the gear that he wants to wear. He might not have 50 pairs of it. He might have two in case it's muddy, but yeah. he's going to get what he needs because dad has the connection. So I don't need like, like Brian, yeah, you're not in it for you. I'm not in it for him, for me. Yeah. I don't care. To, I mean, that's where these parents get wrapped up. And I think it's, it's a slippery slope with this industry giving so much. And there's a cliff. There's that's why there's dependency problems. That's why there's, there's suicidal problems because there's so much they put there's like fallout when it yes. doesn't go right yeah it's you're, you're you're you know it's that one song back then you didn't want me now i'm hot you're all up on me yeah 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 and yeah. then you're not hot and but you're then off it's the other way then yeah. it's the other way yeah. around you know and I, I actually tell people for my journey i was really stoked i wasn't that good yeah yeah because it'd be hard man <laughs> it'd be hard to be the, the man yeah. and then not the man and then you're not it, dude it would be i was just never the man so it was easy yeah, like it was yeah. just it, it was just easy like so yeah it's it's the lawrences i think have a balance and i think the people around him tr- he, they they respect their parents and i think hayden respects his dad i think brian could i think hayden could i'm from what i see can look <laughs> at his dad's eyes and be like ah, i fucked up <laughs> if you enjoyed this content please like and subscribe and to listen to the full three-hour podcast search gypsy tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below gypsy gang